Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Believe in Tennessee Football. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Kerbison, joined with Reed Bacon. We got a good one today. We are doing the top five Vols over the last 25 years. We have a little bit different opinion, me and Reed, but I think everyone knows who we're talking about. So great conversation. Great to reminisce about the great players that we've had at Tennessee. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. So let's start the show. By the game, snap, the kick is in the air, and the kick this time is no, sir, Reed. No, sir, Reed. Final score. Tennessee 20, Florida 17. Pandemonium reigns. Looks, loads up, fires long for the end zone. The pass is going to be caught on Tennessee. Tennessee, Tennessee wins! Caught it by Tennessee, Jawan Jennings. Jennings makes the catch in the end zone on the Hail Mary. Down at the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. What did he do? All he did was score. Joey Kent, touchdown on play number one. All right, so before we jump into the nitty-gritty of the podcast, got to shout out our presenting sponsor, Bet Online. So, you know, NBA still going on, NHL starting to get into the playoffs, a lot of stuff to bet on, golf, everything. Uh, So Bet Online is your place to go. It's got all the news, the stats, the odds, everything that you could think of. Um, I mean, it's the best place that you can bet, and everybody loves getting a little bit of cash on the side. So go over to betonline.ag or use your mobile device and sign up and get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. So helping you out just for signing up, and it's free to sign up, so why not? Uh, so yeah, Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. All right, welcome in, everybody. Like I said in the intro, we're about to get into a uh, argument of sorts. I'm going to let you know exactly who the best Vols have been over the last 25 years. And Reed is going to attempt to let you know and fail miserably. Um, and if he says anything different, he's a hater. But uh, yeah, super excited. How we doing, Reed? Are you ready to lose or what? Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's copyrighted or not. So we might have to cut that part out. Stop. Tell those losers to back up. <laughs> Um, But yes, so like I said, we're going to do the top five Vols over the last 25 years. So going back to 1995, um, we'll start with five. We'll work our way down, uh, give you some honorable mentions right before our first pick, and uh, we'll argue amongst each other. So going to be a fun one. Um, All right, Reed, do you want to start with five since I started the list last week with the most important games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead. I'll jump right into this. Number five. Drum roll, please. The number five best player in the past 25 years for the University of Tennessee is middle linebacker slash D end Leonard Little. Okay. (laughs) So jumping into this, I I was like, I, I, I did a quick list of five people and I was like, yeah, that's it. And then I was like, as I as I started looking back, I wanted to look at stats. I wanted to look at honors. I kind of wanted to look at different stuff. And it actually did change a little bit. Um, Leonard Litter was always going to be on the list. Uh, a fabulous player. Um, I do think it's impressive that he played middle linebacker and defensive end. Um, he made some big-time plays. Um, one that comes to mind is the sack that he had against Al- – well, strip sack that he had against Alabama to win the game. Um, and so, I mean, the guy was just incredible. He has one of the most – famous pictures probably in UT history and a really incredibly awesome picture for college football sports in general when he's in the all whites looking fresh dark visor standing over that Auburn receiver that he had just rocked um so anyways real quick stats and you might he's probably on your list too so we don't have to read the stats again 182 tackles 28 sacks 
Um, he was the co-SEC player of the year, which is very impressive. First team All-American. Um, and he was second in sacks behind Reggie White at, at the time that he left. So, obviously, an incredibly good player. Um, this doesn't have anything to do with why we pick, but he did have a good college career. I mean, a good NFL career. But anyway, so Leonard Little is my – And this is why I'm – I know that my number five pick is not is not what you want to hear. So I was back and forth between two guys, and oh, I'll geez. I'll share you their stats and their accolades and tell you how close it was. Their first year on campus, they were second team All SEC. Their second year on campus, second team All SEC. First year, first team All SEC and All Americans. One has 28 sacks, one has 33 sacks, one has 53 tackles for loss, one has 52 tackles for loss. They are so close with the players that they are, and honestly, if your number five pick wouldn't have got hurt his second year and had four more games, maybe he gets to 33 sacks. But my number five guy is Derek Barnett. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably – yeah. And like I said, the stats are very close to each other. You know, I do love the fact that he's a Tennessee boy, you know, that always plays close to me. I played with the guy. I saw him straight up. I had to block him all the time in practice. It's it, – I felt like I had to say this because the stuff that I saw out of him and he fought through injuries his entire career, his work ethic at practice – his ability and what I saw out of him, his bend, his speed around the edge, you know, he made me a better player. So I can't leave him off this list with how good he actually was, not just as, you know, like I described in practice and helping me, but in the SEC, how dominant he was and, you know, breaking Reggie White's sack record is a massive, massive achievement. I don't have any argument with it. I, I, I'm fine. I know the two of those are splitting hairs. If I was in a uh, – when I was in a if, – if I was in a courtroom and – or if there was money on the line and I really had to argue with it, I would say that Leonard Little was on better teams. You know, Leonard Little did win a SEC championship and was a big-time player in that. That's true. Um, Derek Barnett just – I mean, they, they had a, a – Derek while Derek was here, they had one or two good years with Butch and then – you know, things kind of fell off. I mean, his like you said, his last game, we were at the Music City Bowl against, like, Nebraska. So, not a uh, real stellar way to go out. But I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to split hairs on that. I, I think Derek Barnett is fabulous. He's one of my favorite players. So, okay. All right. Yeah. So, we have, Leonard, we have Leonard Little and we have Derek Barnett. I also, right. I also, I, I kind of put into it, like, you know, if, if you're – picking the other teammates that go with the guys. And it's like, well, Little Little had Peyton Manning. And, you know, it's like Derek Barnett had Josh Dobbs. You know, Derek Barnett had Butch Jones while Little Little had Philip Fulmer in the late 90s. Both, so it's both, like – Both back coaches, by the way. <laughs> well, one's got a national championship and the other doesn't. So One, one, one should have three national championships and he I, only has one. Totally, he, totally understandable. But I'm just saying – Obviously, Leonard Little had some help, more help than than Derek did. And, you know, one of my later picks, another, you know, reason why I picked him is because of the help he had too. But, uh, yeah, let's get into number four, uh, who you got, who's the next guy up. So, and this is very embarrassing to say, but when I first went through and did my first five, he wasn't on the list. Not because I forgot about him, um, but because I – I didn't really know. I knew he was incredible. I didn't really know how incredible because I was still younger growing up. Mm -hmm. But I went back and I did look at some stats, and there was no way I could not put him on this list. And that's Big John Henderson. Yes, and sir. And it's like, it's like, bro, if you look <laughs> at it, if I'm not mistaken, if memory serves me, there was only, I think, three – there's either three or four only two-time All-Americans at the University of Tennessee – Eric Berry's one, John Henderson's one. Um, I think that was um, Steve uh, Steve Kiner, uh, which was before my day. I think he was one. And there was maybe one other guy, but there was only three or four people in the entire history 
of, of, of the University of Tennessee that had been all Americans twice. So there was no way when I saw that, I said, I knew Big John was incredible, but I have to put him on this list now. To be a two time all American, consensus all American is incredible. Obviously, his stat line, um, I didn't even know this because I was younger, but I didn't even know he fought through injury his second year, or excuse me, his senior year. But to, uh, he's an Outland Trophy winner, consensus all American two years in a row. Um, he, I think he had like 12 sacks during his junior year, bro, 12 sacks is a defensive tackle. Yeah. Is yeah. Awesome. So I, awesome I mean, player. I mean, we'll just say it now. He's, he's, he's up in my list. He's not number four. He's higher on my list. Oh, okay. okay. And, and I, like I, he was in my head. I was thinking about it. And the reason why I got to meet John Henderson one time when we were down in Jacksonville for the tax layer bowl, he came and talked to the team yeah. And I remember seeing him walk in. This is the biggest, you know, I've been in my career. I'm 6'4, 320. I'm sitting up front. I see him walk in. And I've never seen a bigger human being in my life. Yeah. And, and thought to myself, this man is almost 40. And I don't know if I could win against him. Like, I don't know yeah. if I could block him. He, it, it is unbelievable once you get in front of him, his presence. I mean, he's still 300 plus pounds, six, seven, six, eight, yeah. and just an absolute monster. The video of him at Jacksonville and having I the know, trainer smack slapped. him in the face, yeah, yeah, puts him in the echelon of the best players out there. Just him, that ain't hard enough, Joe. Come yeah. on, Joe, smack out of me. He's like, yeah. oh, you make blood come out my mouth, Joe. I love that. I was trying to get juiced up for that one, so I had the double slap call. Oh, sh- Joe, that ain't good enough. Come on, Joe. Ah, thank you, baby. Thank you. You make your blood come from my damn mouth. You got to make blood come to the mouth. And, if, you know, like you said, Outland Trophy winner, it, all-time, you know, two-time all- All-American. He's, he's number four in SEC history for single-season sacks at 12. He's fourth as a defensive tackle. Right. He's also part of the 2000 team, which is when he won the Outland Trophy. They only rushed – they they held all of their opponents to 817 yards rushing for the entire year. That's how yeah, dominant that 2000 team was, and he was a part of that. Yeah, it was incredible. And the other thing is, too, being that tall, it's just like with Calais Campbell. Being that tall does not – like, it can almost be a little bit of a problem – as a defensive tackle, but it just shows how good he and Calais are with their hands, their feet, their leverage, all that stuff. But John Henderson, yeah. like, he just probably – he's incredible, but he still probably doesn't get enough puff because of some of these other guys on the list are going to get more puff. I, I would say Leonard Little gets more puff than, than John Henderson, maybe. For sure. Time time. And the other thing that cracks me up, bro, is that we legitimately had John Henderson and Albert Hainsworth on the same defensive line. That's insane, literally insane. I, I, I cannot imagine as an offensive lineman going against that and just being like, you're not catching the dang break the entire game. No, it doesn't, no, it doesn't matter. No. Like they're coming for you. And, and yes, bro, they're both so dominant when they were here and they were so dominant in the NFL. Too. Well, see, it's, I it's don't insane. even see, I'll be, on, I'll be honest. I really don't remember how dominant Albert Haysworth was with us. I think he got much better when he's in the pros and we all know he had that one year with the Titans that he was the best defensive player in the entire NFL, not the best D lineman, but the best defensive player. Yeah. So like, and I think it was with Albert, it was always, he had the physical tools, the size, the mean streak, all that. He just was maybe a little lazy or didn't always give his full effort. But buddy in that contract year at the Tennessee Titans, when we went, I think 14 and two, and got the first round by, he was dominating folks. So, anyways, I think that's funny. But yeah. okay, so my my number four, big John Henderson. And anyway, so go to who's your fourth? So my number four is probably the best leader that has ever come through the University of Tennessee. And this is Al, garbage if he's on Al the Wilson. Garbage. You put no. him higher. No, 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 no. Listen, Al Wilson, one time all American. Okay. So great for him. He just got inducted to the college football hall of fame. You just said yourself, you never see you don't, there's only a few guys have been two-time All-Americans. So that's why I have John Henderson above him. Okay. Right. 
Al Wilson's one time All American. He was, you know, all SEC guy before that. Um, he's from Tennessee, which I love. All, you know, like I said, is seen as one of the best leaders. He got kind of overshadowed with Peyton being there. And it is a huge testament to him the fact that he was able to take over leadership from a team that lost another one of the best leaders in Tennessee football history in Peyton Manning and just be not miss a beat. And then we go and win a national championship and he goes, you know, 13 and 0. And what is very impressive is that national championship team, we went 13 and 0. So obviously we're a good team. He was the only person on that team who was an all American, which is kind of insane to think about with all the talent that we had and all the guys that we had in that team, he was the only one off that team that was an All-American. So I, I I love Al Wilson. I think there are three guys that I would put above him, but Al Wilson is is definitely on my top five. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, we, we, we will 1,000% be revisiting this. Okay. <laughs> all right, number three for me, number three for me is the one and only Eric Barrett. So, Eric Berry, another two-time All-American winner. And the things that that guy would do – now, do I – listen to me, and this is not a hot take. This was not a hot take in any stretch of imagination. He was so incredibly amazing. And, like I said, I have him number three in the top, you know, UT football players in the past 25 years. And he would still be on the top list even if we did our entire um, history. But I still think he was a little he was a little overhyped, and that's meaning from us, from Tennessee fans. Like, I, like, I mean, I he was he was amazing. Like, he was literally amazing in every aspect. If when I was reading earlier today, everything that he won and all the stuff that he was up for, the awards are insane. Besides being two times All American and. SEC, the first team SEC, all this, and the Outland Trophy winner or uh, Jim Thorpe winner, all this. Like, all of his statistics are insane when you look at it. And it's like all the highlights that you would see, all the big hits. Like, he deserved everything. He is one of my favorite people. He's one of my favorite players. I loved him in the NFL. You will never hear me say a bad word about him. I'm just saying, like, Tennessee fans, like, we act like he was, you know, the greatest player ever here. <laughs> But, but no, like, Eric Berry, amazing. Like I said, go – I mean, there's not even – there's no even reason for me to read off everything because we'd be here all night. It's it's literally insane. Like like I said, Jim Thor, the Lot Trophy, the Chuck uh, Benaric, um, All-American, started as a true freshman. Like, bro, he did it all. Like, he was incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I, I completely agree. Um I'm gonna. I'm just gonna keep going because obviously we're gonna have some similarities with the rest of our list. So I don't necessarily want to give away my whole list as I'm yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my. And let me say real quick too. I don't mean like overrating in a bad way. I'm just saying Tennessee fans like acted like he was, you know, like literally the greatest thing since sliced bread. Or well, like, I mean, he was the greatest player since the early 2000s. So it, I mean, we went eight years. And he was better than like every player we had since, you know, John Henderson. Yeah. So that, that was like Tennessee fans. I think they were starving for it and they were like, Oh wow. We look at this guy and, and he's, he's flashy. Yeah. Maybe, maybe right? he's flat. Yeah, he's flashy yeah, maybe, too. I mean, he led the, he led the sec and the NCAA and in interceptions. Yeah. Maybe you're like, right. I guess, I guess I just always remember like, I don't know. You're right. I, sometimes a Tennessee fan that like, I guess maybe he did deserve every, every single pub and every single thing he got. I do remember arguing with people back in the day. They, uh, they were like trying to argue me like two, two ones. I remember someone tried to argue me that Eric Berry wasn't as good as Taylor Mays. Well, I wrecked that. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely dominated that clown in the argument. And, and, and it was so great on the NFL draft day when Pete Carroll could have taken him. And he literally took Earl Thomas from Texas over him. So that was funny. That's an indictment from your own team break. No you guys way. are clear. I said if Eric Berry played at Alabama, he would have been at the Heisman Trophy. He would have been a finalist because yeah. the media would have literally crapped their pants over him. Yes, for sure. Uh, 
for sure. Yeah. And, and I mean that's ridiculous. If if Mark Barron was better, then why didn't he win an SEC Defensive Player of the Year? Why did he not go fifth overall in the NFL draft? <laughs> yeah, like I mean, idiots. All right, I'm um, an idiot. I'm an idiot. Okay, so he wasn't overhyped, but you just get what I mean. Tennessee fans yes. were just like, he, I mean, it's you know. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Um, so my number three is John Henderson, which we okay. talked about earlier. How yep. impressive he was, his size, his athleticism. You know. Like you said, the ability to be a low playing, like a low player using your leverage at six, seven, six, eight is insane. Um, and just, I mean, so it just jumps off the screen. I mean, he dealt with ankle injuries his last year, which is, I think, the only reason he probably didn't yeah. go back to back in Outland Trophy and back to back in Defensive Player of the Year or SEC Defensive Player of the Year just because of that ankle injury. Um, Hey, but, I meant to say earlier when we were talking about him, I saw earlier looking at stats, he still against Alabama had like nine tackles. <laughs> and that senior that senior year, that senior year, he had like nine tackles and like dominated that game. And then like his next best game, his senior year with the ankle issue was Georgia. So it's like just yeah. jumping up in the big games. Yeah, exactly. It's like, all right, here we go. Wrap that thing up. We're going to play. Right. Um, but yeah, John Henderson, number three. I, I, I also think the lineman in me, wants him higher than some of the others that could have been there. Like, you know, when you're trying to argue Al Wilson, like the lineman in me is just so impressed that he won the Outland Trophy and, he, you know, two-time All-American and all that kind of stuff. So Right. No, I understand. All right, number two. Let's jump into it. Who is your number two ball? Uh, it's Peyton Manning. Boom. I- so I, that's exactly who I picked also. So we can talk about it at the same time. Yeah. So now I'm now I'm shocked because I have no idea who your number one is. Um, if, if you don't have if you don't have Peyton as number one, because I thought you were gonna get mad at me for not having Peyton number one. Um, we all know Peyton Manning, we all know he's a sheriff. Um I personally personally, I do mean it. I felt like he was a little overrated in college from UT fans. Like did he get screwed out of the Heisman Trophy? Yes, yes, he got screwed out of the Heisman Trophy. Was he still incredible for Tennessee? Yes, he was still incredible for Tennessee. But his aura grew because, like, his aura was amazing because people did love him, but it mm. had to get bigger and bigger and bigger after he went to the NFL and did what he did. Yeah. Now, I, I can't, I'm not going to argue that for facts because I wasn't – I was alive at that time, but I, I, I was just starting to remember stuff like, honestly, the first season I really do remember is the national championship year, which is really cool for me. But, like, you know, like, for the things about Peyton Manning, for me, it's like, you know, he never beat Florida. And that that's tough. Like, that's that's a tough pill for me to swallow. Like, that, that's that's yeah. one of the reasons why I have him at two. I mean, he has six losses in his entire collegiate career, and four of them are to Florida. Yeah, yeah. Who Just, are the other two for? One against Bama, one against Georgia? Uh, no. He, he, one, I he, think – he, I think – I think one was a Bama and then one was a bowl game. Um, okay. But I can't remember who which one it was. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he only got All-American his last year, you know, when he won all of the other awards, the John Unitas Award, the Maxwell, the Davey O'Brien, you know, the best college player, Espy, he won that in 97. So, oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, but, you know, before that it was, you know, he was a second-team All-SEC his junior year. Right. Now, right. And he was still a great player, but I also think he was one of the first, like, turning of the tide where we're not going to run the ball 45 times in a game. We're actually going to throw it. Because right. before that, Jamal Lewis's, you know, Travis Stevens, like, those guys were getting 40 touches a game, and it was run, 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 and Peyton came in, and it was like, well, he's he's pretty good, so let's let's throw the ball. Let's – air it out a little bit but I see what you're saying that the lore is what got him to where he is and then possibly you know his NFL career but this the guy still broke 42 records you know with SEC Tennessee and NCAA combined he still when he graduated was number three in all-time yards and fourth in all-time touchdowns in a career so it's not like the guy wasn't great. He was still great, but not beating Florida, 
not really getting all the accolades before his last year. Did, the only one, if I'm not mistaken, he only won one SEC championship. Is that correct? Or did he win two? They didn't. They. I, did, I believe you're right because I think it was only '97 versus Auburn. And, Auburn, right? And and this is probably going to help uh, your list, but I read that. It, you know, at halftime they were losing, and the reason they were able to come back is because of a junior middle linebacker and Al Wilson's Al Wilson, halftime yeah. speech. Yeah, and yeah. crying in front of the team, saying, "I've never won a championship in my life, and I will yeah. die on this field to win for you guys." All right. So, I mean, that probably helps your argument more than you know Peyton Manning being up at the top or at the number one spot. So. Yeah, and the funny thing is, and people say this is a homer in me, I I didn't like Peyton Manning for the longest time because I was tired of hearing all the chirp, 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 chirp about him. And then for me as a Tennessee Titans fan, and he went to Indianapolis, it was sickening growing up. And you walk into a Weigel's gas station, a Pilot's gas station, a Mapco in, in, in Nashville, in Knoxville, in the Tri-Cities, and there's Tennessee ball stuff. Sometimes there wasn't even Titan stuff, and then there's Indianapolis Colts stuff. Yeah. And it's like there were more Colts fans in the state of Tennessee because of him. And I get it. That's fine. You can do that. I'm just saying as a younger kid growing up, like he used to piss me off, and then he used to always dominate the, the Titans. But I'll be honest with you. I argue with people that Peyton Manning is, as of right now, now someone might argue Aaron Rodgers. Some definitely might argue um, um, Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, people are going to argue and say Tom Brady. I still consider Peyton Manning the greatest quarterback to ever walk the planet Earth right now. And my really, and, 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 and yeah, and, and and my argument is very very simple. It's he was incredible in high school. He was very very good in college. Should have been a Heisman Trophy winner. He was an All American, and then he went five time MVP. To my knowledge, still no one else in the NFL has done that. Five time NFL MVP. All the records. All everything. He didn't have Bill Belichick. If he had had Bill Belichick in some of those defenses, I think he would be as accomplished as Tom Brady. And the other thing is that people never talk about is Peyton Manning changed the game on how quarterbacks play. People act like it's so normal now, but people were not going to the line of scrimmage and doing all those checks and doing all that stuff. He is the first person to do that, and now it is a way of life. There's yeah. high school kids doing that crap. No one did it before Peyton Manning, and that's why I say – he did it at every level. If your argument is Tom Brady, bro, Tom Brady split time at freaking Michigan. Like, and then, yes, he is the most accomplished. Yes, he does have the most Super Bowls, but I do believe it's a team game. And I do think he, I mean, Bill Belichick, in my opinion, is the greatest NFL coach of all time. So it's like if Peyton Manning had that, he would be racking up the, the rings too. Plus, he had the major neck injury. I get it. Tom Brady had ACL, but ACL is a lot, lot better to come back from than a neck injury. Anyways, soapbox. Whatever, I'll get off the soap, I'll get off the soapbox. But I yeah, I'm surprised. I thought you were gonna maybe have Peyton Manning number one and I was gonna argue why he wasn't. Yeah. Anyway, so Peyton Manning's number two for both of us. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I'm sh I'm shook. I have no idea who your number one's gonna be. So so you know who my number one's gonna be for yeah. sure. Yeah. I'm so, yeah, I mean you know. I know who your number one is. Yeah, you're just not thinking. Oh, it's gonna be you. <laughs> no, bro, I am not that conceited. Jeez. Well, I, I mean, obviously, I thought you might need a joke, but wait, I'm not thinking. I don't. It, yeah, okay. Anyways, well, we're going to put a pause here and we're going to do our two honorable mentions before yes. we name number ones. Yes. All right, go ahead with one of your honorable mentions. So, I mean, I kind of alluded to it at the beginning, but, you know, I was going back and forth between them, but Leonard, right, Little, right. Leonard Little is, you know, an honorable mention for sure. It, it was definitely back and forth between him and Barnett. And I gave it to Barnett because I played with the guy and, and, you know, saw him and firsthand the yeah. and the sacks. Um, but yeah, like you said, Leonard little, just one of the scariest dudes out there. I remember when I was at UT, uh, our, our video coordinator showed us, showed us tape of, of Leonard in practice. And he just wanted to show us this one, this one thing and it was like one-on-one -on -one drills with the tight ends, like defensive oh, ends versus tight ends, That's like run, run blocking. And apparently the tight they went, they went against each other. The tight end like beat Leonard a little bit, like reached him or whatever the drill yeah. was. 
and Leonard was just like, run it back, run it back, run it back, get get down, we're doing it again, we're doing it again. Like, would not let him leave. Like, no way am I going to step away after losing. And I see this film, Leonard takes off, lifts up underneath this guy's shoulder pads, like right in the chest plates, drives yeah. him back and dumps him over a water cooler. Literally dumps him like over this standing so water like, cooler so just like movie, onto movie, his back. Like cliche, cliche movie type stuff. Yes. Like you don't see that. Like that's that's fake. That's like for the cameras. But he literally – I did it. I saw the film of him doing it. Dude, we and, need to try to get that film, bro. That'd be sick. Yes. And, and he was just such a dominant guy. And like I said, you know, he had a knee injury his second to last year where he missed four games. I mean, four games, the guy had like seven or eight games with multiple – or I think ten games with multiple sacks. So, it's like he probably could have broke Reggie White's record if he had that. So, right. yeah, I mean, I, I can't – I can't in good conscience not mention him in at least an honorable mention here. Yeah. Well, I, I – not that I don't like the guy. I just – I'm 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 a fan. I have two others that are kind of fan favorites for me. Yeah. Um, but I, I, ha- I have to have an honorable mention of DB, Derek Barnett. He's fabulous, great player, so nice and easy and done with there. So one of my honorable mentions is DB. Yours is double L, Leonard Little. Who's your next honorable mention? So, and you know, I was looking at it. I was kind of looking through all Americans and seeing, you know, what else is out there. And I, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to pick some other like fan favorites of mine just growing up. But yep. when I yep. looked back, it's like, well, honestly, they didn't have the accolades that you would expect. Right. Um, so one that I, you know, really didn't know of because I was kind of young, but Dion Grant. Oh, incredible. And, yeah. How incredible he was, how athletic. I mean, I, I think he had like seven or eight interceptions in one year. Did you um, not see the? I mean, you had to see. You've seen the highlight of the one-handed pick against Florida. That's like yes. his biggest. Yeah. Yes, and 1999 All American. Um, you know, one of one of the most athletic guys on the field at that moment. So absolutely. I I feel like you know because like I said, I I wanted to look back and when I really got into football, you know, from the 03 to. 10 range you know when you're a kid into a teenager and you're like oh my gosh this is so cool Tennessee football I wanted to find a guy like around there like a Gerard Mayo um but he didn't have an All-American you know he he wasn't all that but I also looked at like a Jesse Mahalona who came in and was like a flash so he had the one good year because you know he was a Juco transfer so he only got two um and like a Dan Williams that I looked at, but he didn't really have the accolades. He was a good player and got drafted high, but he didn't necessarily have the all Americans and, you know, all the different awards that you could have. So I think Dion Grant is a, is a good mention for that. We were, we, we will do a list. We'll do another top five. We're going to kind of make this a series since it's, bro, you know, quit awesome. digging in your ear. <laughs> My ear's itching, bro. I'm trying to, Trying to itch it out. Um, okay, so it's we're going to do our top five. We're going to do our top five series. Yes. Um, and we'll do – we're going to do everything. Top five, our favorite players, best players, worst players. We'll maybe, maybe top Maybe top five overrated. Top five favorite snacks in Nayland. Top five favorite traditions. Top, top five, five stadiums in the SEC. Top five – Well, I, never, I haven't been to that many of them, so not doing that. Dumb idea, <laughs> you. Yeah. I've been to a lot of them. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You haven't been there for actual games. You're playing. <laughs> All right. You already mentioned Gerard Mayo, one of my favorites. He will definitely be on one of my on my list of favorites. Um, but I, yeah, I can't put him over Deion Grant. Um, and I actually had another sneaky one, but I'm going to wait and bring him up on my favorites because the okay. funny thing is, I couldn't stand him in a way when I was younger but I respect him and I look back on it now and I'm like, that guy was a freaking player. Mm-hmm. But anyway, okay. I'm gonna, so, so I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Deion Grant. Funny thing is two people forget Deion Grant was a part of that 2007 New York giants team. He was a starting safety for them when they upset the uh, New England Patriots. So he had a nice little solid NFL career too. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. All right. So I'm excited, bro. I, I mean, who who's your number one? I mean, is it like I mean it, it's so it it was a guy on your list that you put lower, but my number one is Eric Berry. Oh. Uh, and you know, I thought you would have gotten <laughs> you obviously didn't think about it, but two time all American. He was the You sure first, you don't you sure you don't want to make it uh like uh you know <laughs> Josh uh, Dobbs. Brett Ken- yeah, Brett Kendrick. <laughs> Shout out Brett, man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so Eric Berry, two-time All-American, the first unanimous All-American since 1990. So all these other guys that we mentioned were not unanimous All-Americans. Eric was the Jim Thorpe Award winner. I mean, it, all the interceptions. Uh, he, when he graduated, had the most interception yards in NCAA history at 494. He's a three-time All SEC player. He was also unanimous All-American on the 2008 five and seven Tennessee Vols, Philip Fulmer's last year. That is when the guy was his best. Is when Tennessee was seen at its worst in the past 20 years since then. And he still balled out. He imagine being that dominant on such a bad team. And he was a unanimous All American. He could have left and went to the draft. It, his whole coaching staff changed and he stayed. He stayed for another year, was there in 2009 with Kiffin, and was just as dominant, just as great of a player. And, you know, character of the guy also. Uh, just incredible. You know, we, we took the shots at Peyton because he was great his last year. His other years were okay. But Eric was a baller as soon as he stepped on the field. He was the only defensive player that started his first game, true fresh and first game, during Philip Fulmer's entire career, coaching career. He's the only one who did that. So – and he's an amazing person, like you said. The dude gained weight while he beat cancer. I mean, he's a freak. He really is. And I just felt like he really does deserve the praise, which, you know, when you were saying Tennessee fans kind of over him, I'm like, bro, I, it might be so. But in my eyes, especially during that time period, like I said earlier, when I was just coming into football and just really starting to fall in love with it, eight, nine, ten years old, it, it, that was – he was the best thing since sliced bread. So, I got to put him up there. He's he's definitely my number one in the past 25. So, a couple cool – yeah, yeah, I, I love EB. Um, it still really does bother me that he kind of just faded out of the NFL. And that dude is just such an OG – that like you know he probably maybe did get some calls, and was just like I'm I'm good if it wasn't what he wanted I don't know that for sure I'm just taking a guess like he's just that own dude like he just does his own like in a way he's kind of like a Marshawn Lynch where like they just beat to their own drum in their own way, and so like it bothered me a lot you know that you know it tore his Achilles, and I hated that because that was right after he came back from cancer and had a really good year. And then it was that year that the D Ford was lined up in the neutral zone and cost the Chiefs a chance to go to the Super Bowl because he was on that team. But then they release him, they pick up Tyron Matthew, and then they win the Super Bowl. Tyron Matthew is not better than Eric Berry. I'm I'm just going to say it right now. Like they're they're very comparable. But if I if I say that I thought Tennessee fans were a little – and that's just the power of Tennessee, man. Like, yeah. they're one of the best fan bases in the world, but they can definitely be annoying about stuff, and I am a Tennessee fan. But, like, if Eric Berry was, in my eyes, maybe a little – I'm Overhyped. not going to say because I'm not going to say it because he wasn't overrated, but if, if, if even if I loved him, it, but I felt like Tennessee fans, I'm like, all right, guys, like, just leave it alone. Like, you know, he, he, you know. Um, but he was underrated in the NFL, and it used yeah. to really piss me off because it was like Cam Chancellor or Earl Thomas would get all the hype because that was when the Legion of Boom was big. Bro, Eric Berry was out there balling on people, and 
he was like a mix between the two of them. He could lay you out like Cam Chancellor, and he could cover like Earl Thomas. And so it really bothered me that, like, he just didn't get the pub. And then, like I said, Tyron Matthew, everyone's like, oh, Tyron Matthew, the heartbeat of the of the Chiefs, this, that, and the other. I'm like, bro, Eric Berry was doing that when they weren't as good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they didn't get enough publicity. And Tyron Matthews always got a lot of pub because of kind of his – his, his um, just whole aura and coming from LSU and, and the Honey Badger is great. Like, don't get me wrong, but man, it just, it, and then, and then it, when they let him go and he didn't get picked up when Eric didn't get picked up by somebody else, because I was really hoping he'd go ring chasing and it would have jumped on with, um, you know, like the Packers or like a Saints or like one mm-hmm. of these other teams. But I love Eric. I think he's, you know, like you said, beating cancer, coming back, balling out. Um, he, I don't think he's ever still even retired. I'm telling you, that guy's probably like out, like working with kids or like working with like the homeless or doing something probably awesome. And like, we don't, no one knows because he just stays so low key. Yeah. So, you know, anyways, I, you know, I can definitely ramble on about him all the time as well, because, you know, I'm right there with you. I love him. Um, but anyways, let me get to my number one. And there's, there's really in my, in my opinion, um, because I am biased. He's my favorite football player of all time. He's my favorite athlete of all time. But Al Wilson's number one. And the reason Al Wilson is number one. You're also a linebacker at heart. So true. Well, actually, no, I'm like a I'm like a nose tackle at heart. <laughs> That's what you really want to be. Dude. And this is I heard this from three people. I heard this from T. Martin himself. I heard it from Jamal Lewis, and I heard it from John Chavis' son. All three of these people, all at separate times, all told me that if it wasn't A for Al Wilson, you know, we know they wouldn't have won a national championship. Granted, that's, that's not shatter-breaking, but they all told me that because of Al and how he brought that team together, that they were better when they lost Peyton Manning because everything was about Peyton. Everything was about Peyton. And when he left, they could be a team again. Like, T. Martin, like, who's this T. Martin guy? He's got to replace the greatest quarterback in, in, in Tennessee history. Yeah. And you got, like, it was more of a team thing. And I would put, honestly, I'd put Peyton Money, Peyton Manning number one if he won a national championship. He didn't win a national championship. Al Wilson did. And Al Wilson was the main reason that they did. And that's why he's the number one player. His he 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 could talk the talk. He could walk the walk. His play was incredible. He he made big plays at big times. He had those four fumbles against Al, uh, against Florida. Florida. Three yeah, of I them. mean, like everything that he did was like, you know, all of his big highlights and big stuff was all in big time games and big plays. And like I said, I am biased because I would literally like. I mean, I, I love the guy. Like, I mean, I, I, I love the way he plays the game. Like, he's the reason I fell in love with football. But, yeah, number one, and it's simply because he won us a national championship. And I know all those guys won a national championship. And I, like I'm saying, like, those three guys that I mentioned, they all at different times, I was lucky enough to be around talking with them uh, just to be happy to kind of be in the same area. And they all mentioned that it was like they were a better team and it was better for everybody when Peyton Manning left because he got all the attention. And there's a lot of times that people even said into the pros that, like, Peyton wouldn't trust people. Peyton tried to do it himself. And sometimes that was a detriment to him, even with him being incredible. But Al Wilson, number one, he got us a national championship along with a lot of those other guys. And 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 that that's why, like, you know, he, Peyton didn't do it. And and that's why I give it to, I give it to Al. Understandable. I mean, like I said earlier, he was the only All American on that '98 team. He was bona fide. The, I mean, the leader of of that team. He was pretty. Well, much wait, the, no, wasn't no, wasn't Deion Grant? Deion Grant was on the '98 team. So yeah, he, but he did. But, but he, he, he wasn't. He, he wasn't an All American that year. No, okay. he was All American the next year. So yeah, gotcha, Al was gotcha. the only All American on that team. And yeah, yeah. I mean, also probably the scariest looking human being. I've ever seen. I mean, I mean, with that, with that, that tape, that, with that yes, tape around yes, his waist and yes. the, his sleeves rolled up, those big old shoulder pads, and he's just walking back and forth, just jacked. Like, Yo, oh my gosh, incredible! I, I like going against him. You're just like, 
Uh, yeah, man amongst boys. This guy. Yeah, exactly. Man amongst man amongst boys. I mean, he looked like that in you know late nineties. He, he looks bigger than any linebacker I've seen. Like yeah, he, he going back to the NFL, going to the NFL now. Like he is a monster. And the, another thing is too. I told that story on earlier podcasts, which I don't know if it's true or not. I was told by someone that should know now, whether they're BS me or not. But like I said, when Peyton Manning was throwing those picks and Al Wilson walked up to him at halftime and said, if you throw another MF interception, I'm going to, you know, beat your ass. And he's younger than Peyton and Peyton's like, you know, the, the, you know, Peyton's Peyton. He's a product, the prodigy child, like whatever, like, you know, to be able to do that, like, it takes so much heart and leadership and respect from your team to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just, you know, he's, he's number one for me. And um, yeah. So I, I, I thought this was a fun list. I, I did too. I, I really I, enjoyed I, I do it. respect the fact too, that neither of us had Peyton number, number one. Yeah. I just felt like that's so chalk. I do too. I think it's very chalk to have him number one, obviously, you know, his stats back him up, but there's just something to either winning more, you know, being the voice of a team like Al was, or just fighting through adversity like Eric did. Like that, there's just something a little more to it than just the stats, just the numbers when you get to, you know, like get down into football. So I think that's why both me and you were like, I can't. I cannot put him there. Plus, the 0 to 0 and 4 versus Florida is just such a yikes. Other thing about Al, too, that people sleep on is he had he had a very good NFL career. He was a first round draft pick. He was, I mean, it was later in the first round. It might have been last pick or second to last pick, but went to Denver, had a great career. Um, I think he was, he led the NFL in tackles as a rookie. And then he ended up breaking his neck like, you know, or breaking a bone in his neck. He didn't, like, break his neck and was, like, paralyzed, but had a very serious injury, so he had to stop. But, like, people don't even, like – he doesn't get revered as how good he even was in the NFL, too, which is which is sad. But, yeah, I just want to mention that. That's why he's a college football Hall of Famer. He just got voted in this this year, this past year. So, it's like, you know, that's, that's with why. How, with how small Knoxville is, I still don't know how I haven't met that man. I, I need to, though. <laughs> Reed's gonna get get on the floor and start bowing. Yeah, I mean, right. I, yeah, he's the reason I wore twenty seven. But all right, well, hey, this was fun. This was fun. A ton I of hope fun. You, uh, hope you slappies out there liked it, enjoyed it. <laughs> um, we will bring back. I do have a good big orange juice uh, for next week. Um, but we just we kind of keep these tight and short. We don't want to ramble on, which we do anyways. But I'll bring a big orange juice back next week that the folks will enjoy. And Kyler, anything from you? Yeah, uh, just appreciate you guys watching, listening. Uh, you know, we're presented by Bet Online, so if you're ever, you know, betting on any games, any stuff that's going on, make sure and head over there. Um, you know, follow us on social media at Kyler Curbison, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you know, at R Bacon Twenty Six on Twitter for Reed. Um, Rate, subscribe, share with your friends and family. Let them know what's going on. Uh, you know, please contact us uh, if you have questions. You know, want a certain list that you guys think would be fun to listen to. You know, listen to us talk about. Uh, you know, you can get to us at believe in Tennessee football at gmail.com. and then our phone number eight six five three two two nine two three two. And yeah, we'll answer any questions you might have and and go over that stuff. So. Like I said, appreciate you guys, and uh, as always, go Vols.